So if you have seen Frosthaven, which you should, you can see that a lot of the Frosthaven starters have had pretty big changes compared to what they were released uh, just a year ago. Now, that's because there's been a lot of playtesting. However, uh, it's one of those things where it's been very interesting to go through the process of testing these and then compare to what we could do to the initial starters of Gloomhaven. Uh, for example, the perks now go up to 18, and the, a lot of the cards, especially from what we've seen from Jaws, have a higher identity, and some of the classes uh, just scale better. And I think that's one of the things we should talk about is the Inox Brute. The Inox Brute was initially supposed to be the baseline of this is balanced and let's work around this. And that's cool. However, you can unfortunately with Power Creep, you can clearly see some of the locked classes, some of which have got a little bit more attention testing than others. And especially in Jaws, where you can see almost in cases, especially in tankiness, the Red Guard just kind of outclasses the Brute. And that's okay because uh, they clearly serve different purposes. But I think it's one of those where some of the Gloomhaven classes could deal with a revision. So I'm here to share my thoughts on how to fix or improve the Inox Brute. If this actually is well received, I might do more of these, so I will put a patron poll to see if we want to do any more, and if so, which one? So, what is the Brute? Uh, he's actually a mix of a few tricks. He's clearly got some measure of durability, although at low levels it doesn't feel super attainable. As a matter of fact, a lot of people jump in. Sometimes they think, oh, Warding Strength will protect me of Shield Bash, and then uh, they quickly realize you can't tank, and that's just learning Gloomhaven, and that's fine. Uh, however, the Brute's durability should be a little bit more than what we've been given, especially seeing the durability of other classes, um, especially from my play to heavily playtesting the Drifter, and as well as uh, doing a lot of stuff with the Red Guard. I know we, I've played high level Red Guard, but even low level Red Guard has clearly a better durability than the Brute in many cases. He has a lot of forced movement, but not really a lot of, to do with it. Um, it's one of those things where I kind of like the Demolitionist's synergy in that regard, where the Demolitionist can push, but then actually gets the benefit of those. Uh, so unless there's something interesting in the scenario, um, there's really not much to do. In fact, the Cragheart actually gets more benefit out of pushing, but he has less pushes. The Brute has so many of them, you'd think that there'd be uh, something to synergize with that. And I have thoughts on that that I'm going to talk about when we get to the revision later. Additionally, there's actually a lot of things about the Brute, about moving and attacking. If you take a look at Hook and Chain, if you move in a straight line, you get a free attack based off of the amount you moved. Uh, Balanced Measure, clearly one of the cards where you can attack or move equal to the amount of movement or attack you've already done this turn. And of course, a Movable Phalanx, the key level 6 card. Part of this revision, I'm bringing a Movable Phalanx, nerfing it and buffing it at the same time. The buff is it's now a level 1 card that class plays off of as a key card that kind of uh, gets you in motion. Uh, it's one of those where I think it'll fix some of the durability issues if you really want to try to play tanky at the expense of maybe attacking and also giving you some of that mobility early. Last but not least, uh, you can clearly see the Frosthaven starters have a more consistent attack modifier deck size. And if you've taken a look at some of the Gloomhaven classes, some of them like the Mind Thief can get super slim, like you're all, like to 13 cards and you're like, wow, I'm just keeping drawing all these plus twos, plus twos, plus twos, and that's great. And the Brute gets almost 40, almost 40 cards. Uh, and not only that, but some trap cards, like adding uh, two plus ones, which actually make your um, your crit and your plus three that you can add less common. I know there's plenty of rolling modifiers in there, but holy crap, that deck is just too thick and it needs to be trimmed down to a more consistent with the Frosthaven starters. So I have my thoughts on that shortly. So, but first, I think we should go over the card changes I want to pitch. And I, it's one of those things where I wanted the class to be recognizable, so I don't want to make very many changes. And I think it's one of those things where bringing one card that, that kind of is key to how some people play the Brute down to level one, allows you to play it like that Brute early, adding a few uh, perks that make the Brute play a little bit better, and then also fixing some of the cards. Like Shield Bash is fun, but it is so undertuned. So, especially the bottom. If you've seen Jaws of the Lion and go like, oh cool, Red Guard's fun, and then see the Brute's version, you go like, how is this a thing? So we're just gonna keep up a couple cards to, to help uh, allow you to play a more tanky build and uh, play a kick in the door, run in with high move, and then burst out a bunch of damage. So you can have all of the options. So talking about Shield Bash, that's the first card I wanted to address, although the top half is okay. I don't think it's something that needs to be fixed, but the bottom half, even though it does have two pips on that Shield 1, it's just one of those where Shield 1 with nothing else attached to it is just such a 
poor level one action. So adding a move two to it, uh, it still actually makes it worse than the red guard. Now someone can say, well, wait, wait, wait. It's initiative 15, but the red guard's swift strength is initiative 16 and has a jump to it too. So if you use that with boots, you can jump four shield oneself. And this one is similar, move four uh, shield oneself. But so they're, they're just move two or jump two shield oneself. This one's still slightly worse without the jump, but at the very least it keeps it competitive and it might be something you end up bringing around for a while. Provoking Roar's top is actually incredibly strong. Actually, in, in, in all regards to Gloomhaven, an attack two with a hard crowd control like Disarm and Stun is already very strong. There are some classes that get non-loss level one stuns and disarms, and that's fine. You can see in Frosthaven, if you've taken a look, uh, they're either harder to set up or they're losses, or there's just so much less of them. Like you're not gonna see any of the Tinker stun shot anymore in Frosthaven. So we don't want to touch that, but the bottom is just one of those where everyone's like, all right, I'm going to tank, give, give me the hits, and either it just didn't pan out because the enemies didn't do what you wanted them to do, or uh, they hit you and turns out you're just actually not that durable. The initiative 10 is super strong on this, so I still love that, but I think what we could change it to is you pick two up to two enemies within range three, and they must pick you as their focus if they can focus you. Now the cool part is this allows you to possibly effectively taunt them, move out of range, or get two enemies to move to you and not towards an ally. This gives you that more of a roar effect and almost like a taunt. Uh, of course you can kind of screw with them that way and I think this makes this card a lot better. Now of course you're like, well, if this is a bottom, how am I gonna move? The, the Brute actually has several top moves, like uh, from Juggernaut or Frenzied Assault. So you can use some of those to possibly uh, taunt things, move out, or just take the hits, which is also perfectly fine. Uh, just giving you this option, I think, changes the value of this card tremendously, and maybe a bit overtuned. This one probably would need way more testing. A movable Phalanx. So now we're actually going to make it more like an immovable phalanx with a level one card. As you can see, the top half now is shield two self, immobilize self, and one experience. There are other shields one self cards at level one like this. However, I think the ad addition of immobilizing yourself, meaning you could always do it, you know, move at the bottom, then play this, but then you're immobilized on your next turn. You could start with this, but either way you are hindering yourself. But a shield to self at least gives you some ability to be uh, notably tankier at low levels. Not only that, but let's take a look at the bottom where you just, as you can see, you put it into play persistently. And then the, at any point in time, if you would take an action that allows you to move, you may convert all moves on that card to attacks of equal value instead. Very similar to the immovable phalanx that we've had before. As you can see, it also has a move one baked in with it. Now you could just use it as a nice attack one, but attack one on bottom is very weak. So you can move a little bit, just a tiny bit. And then next turn, if you're ready to perform attacks, you're not moving. You're just gonna be unleashing a whole bunch of attacks. This does require a bit of setup still because you have to play the bottom half of this, be in position, and then unleash something. Of course you can leave this in play, then move into position to wherever you need to be, and then use it because it doesn't need to be the next action you make. So, however, it's just one action. This makes it much worse, of course. However, it's no longer a loss and it's level one. Now, of course, you have to keep playing a bottom half. I, I personally think this is something that might make the Brute feel more durable or feel more offensive uh, going forward. It's, this is another one I'd really like to test more. I've uh, run this idea on at least a few of the Gloomhaven scenarios, and it doesn't necessarily feel, it, it, it still feels strong, although with the uh, low amount of movements you have at low levels, it's nothing more than you would already get with Balanced Measure, except Balanced Measure is much easier to use. That said, uh, just giving yourself the ability to uh, be able to effectively do another Balanced Measure, while also being a little hunkering down tanky, and then being able to still do stuff like frenzied assault and giving you the ability to do it more than once so you're just like hey balance measure attack four and then the mind thief's like hey i already do a mind i do attack fours every turn without thinking uh this gives you a few more of those options at least especially if you pair them with boots so one of those things is uh you want to get better movements with um balanced measure and with a movable phalanx so we're upping fatal advance to move five 
and the top part is kind of boring and uh, kills are just dumb so instead uh, we're going to bane and immobilize one adjacent normal enemy it's still basically what it did before it's actually a nerf but the move five i think makes it overall better and it keeps it consistent with what Frosthaven's doing and bringing, getting away from um, executes and more towards introducing Bane. So the perks, we're keeping it more in line with Frosthaven's perks and trying to make it more rewarding. Now we're still trying to keep the pool of attack modifier cards that comes with the Brute. So we're not doing so huge changes like give it the plus four from another box. No, we're still gonna just use the cards that come with the Brute, not add anything super new, but still make it play better. We are keeping a few of the perks, like uh, a bunch of them actually. So starting at the top, uh, we are keeping the remove two minus ones. Those are fine, they're a little boring, but they're pretty fun. And we are keeping that plus three. We are getting rid of those add two plus ones. Ultimately adding more plus ones just does the same thing as others. They make your deck more inconsistent. They actually make your crits and plus threes. They make those things happen less often and at the expense of just drawing more plus ones, which isn't terrible. But it's one of those where it's, it's, it's kind of a trap just because of it makes the deck that much thicker without actually adding a whole large amount of value. So here's an interesting one we're doing. We're replacing up to three of your minus ones with rolling pushes. Not only is this um, getting rid of your minus ones, which is great, now you're gonna clear out all of your minus ones, gives you a nice rolling push, which some of your things can key off of. And additionally, to get rid of some of those plus zeros, we're going to replace two of them with rolling pierce. Just adding the rolling pierces is, uh, it's fine. They're so random. However, it, it feels like most people just didn't even want to take them because ultimately it's hard to figure out, oh, I drew the rolling pierce. Am I even attacking something with a shield? Eh. However, if you get rid of a plus zero in the okay way, it actually feels way better. Also, this kind of is more aligns with what we've seen with like uh, the cards, like the updated perks on the drifter. As you can see, I'm keeping all the rolling modifiers in, so there's still gonna be a pretty fat deck there. Uh, but at the very least, we've removed a few more cards in the early stages, and this gives them a bunch of rolling modifiers that are interesting. Do you wanna disarm, stun, model, or add targets? You have those options now, and ultimately these are already pretty interesting. However, as you can see, the shield one self card replaces a plus zero with a plus one shield one self. So again, uh, instead of just adding more cards and making the deck thicker, you're making your deck more, um, uh, keeping it roughly the same uh, length of non-rolling cards um, and still give it, getting value out of it. And this one feels a lot better removing a plus zero in the process. You still, we're still keeping the adding a plus one with the negative item effects, but I think that's perfectly fine. It's something we've already seen in some of the other starters. So now we're getting into the non-attack modifier perks. So we've got one that costs two. Whenever you perform a long rest, perform a heal four action instead of a heal two. Now the, this is vastly improves some of the brute's durability, especially um, in the mid levels, uh, at high levels when you've got, you know, 26 health and you've got all the prosperity and all these fun items. It, it's not necessarily as big of a problem, but it's one of those if just being able to heal to every rest uh, in addition to that and tapping some of your items, uh, getting your armor back, uh, feels way more rewarding when you have a, such a big health jump. Two felt okay, but being able to heal four every time should be a significant boon to the Brute's overall health. Here, so here's one of the ones that keys off of short rest now. Uh, every time you'd short rest, you if you want to redraw, you don't have to suffer the one damage. And if you short rest, you can refresh one of your handed items with the word shield in the name. This gives you the ability to refresh heat or shield or some of the better shields you find later without having to require you to long rest to get it back. Uh, this, so this is a relatively small perk overall, only giving you a little bit of durability and only when you short rest. This does allow you to short rest without necessarily suffering that ah, of, oh no, I picked the wrong card or oh no, I can't untap my armor and my uh, boots and my, you could at least get one thing back. And lastly, if an action you take would push an enemy and that enemy it ends their forced movement adjacent to a wall or obstacle, once per action you can make one of those enemies suffer one damage. Now, every action you take that pushes has the potential to actually stack on more damage. Also, if you do draw some of those rolling pushes, you might get fortuitously roll into an additional point of damage and knocking them out of the way. 
So you can knock them into traps, knock them into walls, knock them into obstacles and start to just add chip away a bit of damage. Now, of course, this requires you to knock them in specific directions and cost the perk to do it in which you would do to normally improve your attack modifier deck. But being able to potentially have um, one more damage to a lot of your actions will really add up over the course of a scenario if you play the brute in that way. Now, some people actually over time start to not take the pushes as much. And then at that point, you wouldn't take this perk. But some people really love that form of forced control on the brute and I think this uh, class plays much better in that regard. So what do you think about these revisions? Ultimately, I think it's a big improvement on the Brute, but I would like to hear your thoughts. So let me know in the comments below. If you want to see me do some of the other revisions on some of the other Gloomhaven starters, I'll consider it. Uh, I'll probably put it up on Patreon as one of the options for one of the videos we're gonna be doing upcoming. And if you have any suggestions on which class, I'd love to hear it. So uh, thanks all the patrons for supporting this channel. You guys are amazing. And thank all of you for watching.